Hello guys, welcome back to Statistical Academy. I hope you all are doing well. If you have any questions or doubts, please feel free to reach out to me via mail id mentioned in the about section of this channel. Happy to answer your questions by connecting through Google Meet on every Saturday and Sunday. Please write a mail to me to schedule a meeting to discuss your doubts. I live in British time zone, so the best time to connect is between 3 pm to 8:30 pm Indian Standard Time, Saturday and Sunday. In this video, we will learn formatting the data, sorting data, identifying duplicates and removing duplicates. Sometimes when you are exploring data, it can be difficult to interpret the raw values in the data. For example, it's impossible to visually evaluate SAS state values such as date of joining in their raw form. So in your report, you probably want to display the value in a format that is easy to understand. Numeric variables such as salary stores digits, but we might want to display those numbers with commas or currency symbols to make them easier to interpret quickly. To control how values appear in your reports, we can apply SAS formats to variables by adding the format statement to your PROC step. You use the keyword format followed by the variable name and the SAS format that you wanted to apply to the variable. You can format any number of variables in a single format statement. Remember that formats impact the way values displayed in the procedure results. They do not change the raw data values. Let's look at a code example. Here we are printing employee to data set. We are formatting the variable date of interview and date of joining with the date 9 format and the salary with the dollar six dot format. SAS has many formats that you can use. Let's look at some of the most common formats and see the effect that they have on numeric value. The w.d format specifies a width and number of decimal places. The phi dot format is the same as the phi dot zero, so no decimal places are displayed. SAS rounds the displayed value to the nearest integer. By applying the 8.1 format, the value is displayed rounded to one decimal place. It's okay that the format width is 8 even though the digits and the decimal point fill only 7 positions. The comma format inserts a comma, specifying a width of 8.1 rounds the value to the nearest tenth. The dollar format inserts a dollar sign in the displayed value. Keep in mind that the width must accommodate the total width displayed value, including the dollar sign, commas, decimal point and decimal places. With the format $10.2, the entire value is displayed. With the $10, the format value is rounded to the nearest dollar. Similarly, the N format rounds to the nearest whole number and adds the N symbol. Lastly, in the Euro X format, the Euro symbol is inserted in the displayed value and decimal points and commas are transposed. Please be aware that these international formats just adds a symbol to the values. They won't convert the currency value. SAS also offers a large variety of date formats. Although numeric SAS date values are perfect for calculations, we probably never want to look at those raw date values in our results. Here are a few examples of the same date value formatted with different date formats. Notice in the two date format examples that you can control the display of two or four digit year by adjusting the width. Now, we will see a demo. Before we go further, I have provided the link of example file in the description below. Please download it. Once you download it, come back to the SAS studio. You may upload that downloaded SAS dataset to one of your existing folders or you can create a new folder by clicking on this new icon and then selecting folder. Once you create a folder, please upload the SAS dataset to this folder. Copy the path of that folder by clicking on the properties and create a library using that path. Here I have created a library called practice in which we have our practice dataset named hospital. Now we will use the format statement to enhance the values that appear in a proc print report. I will start just with a basic proc print report and the data we will analyze will be the practice.hospital dataset. I'll run this step just to see what the default report looks like. 
So notice the date of opening is in its raw numeric date form. The number of days from the January 1st, 1960. It is very uncomfortable to see a date in number of days from a particular date. Total value is also a raw numeric value. Commas and dollar symbols would help to make those values more meaningful. So let's go back to the code and add a format statement. I'll start with the keyword format and first we will format the variable date of opening. The format I'll apply will be the ddmmyy format and if I provide a width of 10 then that will allow enough display positions to account for a 4 digit year. Remember that all formats in the format statement must have a dot included at the end. So ddmmyy10 dot. Next will be total value and we wanted to format total value with a dollar and an overall width of 16 dot. Next beds with a comma fight dot format. So I can format all of these variables in a single format statement. So I'll run this program. And you can see the display of date of opening total value looks much better. Now I'm going to go back to the code tab because I wanted to show you what happens if we change the widths of these formats. For example, I'll change the ddmmyy to 8 dollar to 14 and let's see what happens when i run this program notice that the date of opening now has two digit year instead of four and what about total value so you'll notice in the large numbers the commas have been removed dollar signs is still there but when you look at the some smaller value the commas are included well remember we allocated a width of 14 for this smaller number 14 was sufficient to include all of the digits and the commas and the dollar sign. For the larger numbers the width of 14 wasn't enough. So SAS eliminated the commas in the display in order to fit the displayed value within the 14 positions. Let's try it one more time. I'll go back to the code tab and this time I will change the ddmmyy to a width of 6 and dollar to a width of 10 and run the program again. Notice date of opening now eliminates the delimiters, the slashes. Total value displays those numbers as a scientific notation. Probably not what you want to see. So if you happen to see values that either display as a scientific notation or possibly missing symbols that you would expect to see in the display. The problem is likely the width that you have provided. You may need to increase the width to allocate enough positions to display the full value. Sorting data can be helpful and sometimes necessary step in exploring your data. For example, you might want to sort on groups so that you can visually examine the high and low values. You might also use sorting as a way to identify and remove duplicate observations. Also for certain data processing steps, sorting is required. To sort the observations in a data set, you use the sort procedure. Using PROC sort, you can sort on one or more character or numeric variables. Like other procedures, you use the data equal option to specify the input data set. Although it's optional, we often use the out equal to option to specify an output data set. If you don't include the out equal to option, PROC sort changes the order of the observations in the input data set. Every PROC sort step must include a by statement. The by statement specifies one or more variables in the input data set whose values are used to sort the observations. The by statement also indicates whether you want to sort the data in ascending or descending order. By default, SAS sorts the data in ascending order. If you want to sort a variable in descending order, you must specify the descending keyword immediately before each variable that you want to sort in descending order. The variables you list on the by statement are sometimes called by variables. Proc sort doesn't generate printed output so you have to open or print the sorted data set if you wanted to look at it. This by statement sorts the data by ascending values of name, 
this by statement sorts by ascending values of name and then within the name by ascending values of marks and finally this by statement sorts by ascending values of name and then within the name by descending values of marks by adding options to the proc sort statement you can identify and remove duplicates in your data the no dup rex option removes adjacent observations that are entirely duplicated in other words it removes observations that are next to each other in the data where the values for each variable match when you are using this option it's good to use the keyword underscore all underscore in the by statement instead of each variable name this sorts the data by all variables so that entirely duplicated observations are next to each other and then the no dup rex option can do its job by removing all of them the data set listed in the ot equal to option has the duplicates removed it is helpful for validation to specify the do port equal to option and generate a data set of duplicate observations that were removed by no do prex here is an example of using no do prex option in the proc sort procedure you can see that input data set class 2 has two observations for alfred that contain identical information the output data set cleaner class has only one of the duplicate observations and the output data set dupe class has the observation that was removed another option that's available in proc sort is no dupe key this option helpful when you want to identify whether you have duplicated values for particular variables when you add the no dupe key option to the proc sort statement only the first occurrence of each unique value of the variable listed in the by statement is kept in the output data set in this example we keep only the first observation for each unique value of name in vitals 1 data set because the day 1 was listed first for each name in the data the output data set vitals day 1 has all the day 1 information and the vitals day 2 data set has the day 2 information Let's use the no dupe rex and no dupe key options in the proc sort to identify and remove the duplicates. We will start by looking at the vitals data set. It has multiple records per subject per vitals at different time periods. A few things to know about the data. We have vitals assessments at different time points. It is possible that there may be some observations within this data that are entirely duplicated. for example see these observations they are duplicated completely in that situation we would like to remove those extra observations that are entirely duplicated also i wanted to filter out last non missing result of each parameter per subject right before the first treatment this is also called baseline flag in our real time and it is very important we can use the proc sort to accomplish them I'll close the vitals data set and come to my program. So in the first proc sort step, we are sorting the vitals data set and created a copy using the out equal option. That will be a temporary data set named vitals underscore clean. In this first step, let's eliminate any entirely duplicated observations. So we use the no duplex option, and if there are any duplicate observations that are removed. I'd like to write them to an output data set, so I'll add the do port option and name the data set vitals underscore dupes. Now remember the no duplex option removes adjacent observations that are entirely duplicated. We must make sure those duplicate observations are next to each other, and the way we do that is sorting by all of the variables. So on the by statement, I'll use the underscore all underscore. as a shortcut instead of writing all of the variable names i'll run the first proc step in the vitals underscore clean so this has all of the duplicated observations removed i can also examine the vitals underscore dupes data set and there were 51 entirely duplicated observations that were removed so vitals clean is in a much better shape let's go back to the code So back in the program let's do the proc sort second step we are going to sort the vitals clean data set which was the output data set from the previous proc sort step 
Here we are creating an output dataset baseline records. We will now filter the records by applying a where statement. So where vs result is not missing and vitals assessment date is less than or equal to first treatment date and vitals assessment time should be less than the first treatment time and then in our by statement I will keep study number patient identifier that is subject id and then descending date and descending time I will run this step and check the data set now we will have a high level glance at one subject to check what was done when we ran the second step firstly we have applied a where statement to filter the records before the first treatment. Now as you can see all of the records are before the first treatment. Secondly we have sorted the data by study number, subject id and descending vitals assessment date and vitals assessment time. As you can see these records are in descending order. We must filter out only these records of each parameter per subject. These are what baseline flagged records. So let us go back to our program and finish out our third prox sort step. Now we will take the baseline records dataset as an input dataset for this step. Actually this baseline records dataset was the output from previous step. Here we have to take the first occurrence of each unique value of study number, subject id, vitals parameter that is vs test and we can do that by adding no dupe key option and I will run this step. Now as you can see we have one record of each vitals parameter per subject right before the first treatment. While learning the proc sort we have also got an understanding of the baseline flag derivation. There are many different reasons why you might want to sort your data. It might be just for display, it might be just for further analysis. You can see it with proc sort. You have this powerful procedure to decide which observations you want to include or exclude.